Okay, everyone. Hey, hi, hello. Welcome to another episode of Looking for Love and All the Wrong Dust Jackets, a show where three friends from college, from up in the Midwest, talk to you about like whatever we want to talk about. Usually, though, romance based. Um, I think that's the cleanest time I ever did that. My name is Liz. <laughs> I'm Danny. I'm still Wiggles. And welcome to the show. Today we are reading That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly like you do. Fleming. But before we get into the book, as usual, we're going to go ahead and start off with uh, what you've been consuming, reading, watching, living in your life. Wigs, go. No. <laughs> I haven't been reading anything. Um, that's not true. I've been re- still reading the same books I've been reading before. I'm just reading them all slowly. So I got nothing to report except that I haven't finished anything. <laughs> Fair enough. I guess I, I haven't been reading a lot. I've been re- I've been watching the show on Netflix called New Amsterdam, which is like a medical drama. And I have been greatly enjoying it. I have been reading. Okay, I'm gonna have to do a little explaining got some explaining to do i do so i've been reading one last stop by casey mcquinston um this book if you've seen it on lists and things so the explaining i have to do is i've been reading a lot of books like the ice planet barbarians or the book that we're reading for today that kind of are really short easy to consume easy to read and have kind of like a similar plot structure or like writing style that's just consumable i guess i don't know how to explain it and I knew I needed a break because I was reading too much, too fast. So I picked a book that I had on my shelf for a long time and I knew nothing about. And she's a bit of a thick boy. So I picked this one, knew nothing about it other than it's on a bunch of lists of like the best of. And it's like meet cute is its trope. <laughs> and fucking didn't even read the back of the book. I was like, okay, I'm reading it. And it reads differently. And I was like, this is great. Um, it's not like super like romances there for sure. It's the main plot, but it's not like it's different than all the other books we've read. Get about 60 pages in and like some weird shit starts happening. And then all of a sudden it's like, is this a, is this a time travel book? And sure enough, if you look at the back of the book, it tells you, sure oh. tells you. Something about halfway in is pretty good. Oh, good to know. I really need to do one of these days. Just do my like good old fashioned go to barnes and noble or walmart and walk into the like romance section and literally just pick a book by the cover i used to do that all the time yeah but nowadays all the covers look the same they do that i like it's either classic harlequin Mm -hmm. romance like like steamy fabio situation or it's like it looks like it got made on canva yeah it's that illustrated like easy to do thing which is fine i like that style but it tells me nothing about the book that's true i used to love doing that like when i was just like bored and couldn't find something i was super interested in reading now this is pre-kindle for me and you know all of that but i would literally just walk into walmart and be like eh let's try you just because i mean they were seven dollar books or whatever and just well, that's the problem now. If you try to buy a fucking book, it's like $20. Yeah. And I don't want to spend $20 on something I'm not going to like. Yeah, exactly. I don't have to love it, but yeah, I'd like to at least like enjoy it. it. When I was in high school, there were these books that had a chokehold on me. And I'm trying, I'm literally going into my Goodreads to try and find them. Um, because I, and th- they all, ha- they were time traveling books. Um and they all had time in the title, which makes them impossible to find because, like, <laughs> how many how many fucking books in the world have, like, time in the title? And I can't remember what they were. But they, like, the there was this, you know, this girl who gets, like, sent back in time. Have you ever watched the movie Kate and Leopold? Uh-huh. No. I love Kate and Leopold. Yeah. Well, first of all, Liz, we're correcting that as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah. It's got Hugh Jackman. Oh, wait, no, I think yeah. I have seen it. It's been a long time. Yeah. It has Hugh Jackman and Meg Ryan, Mm -hmm. who is like rom-com royalty. Let's just put that out there. Um, But it it has kind of that vibe to it. Only it's very like, it's like romance. Here it is. Here it is. 
Um, uh, so uh, it's Caroline Clooney, Caroline B. Clooney. Um, and so here, the, it's a time traveler series. Um, and so I just like, I like, you like unlocked a core memory for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so um, I'm just going to read you the synopsis of the first book. So if you want to have like this, like, ridiculously dumb little romp i i re- <laughs> i'm going to read in these books not not to say that these are bad books or anything but like you're obviously beyond the age range where you're gonna be like in raptures of these books okay so the first one's called both sides of time <laughs> and i um imagine changing centuries and making things worse not better on both sides of time Imagine being involved in two love triangles in two different centuries. What if, no matter which directions you travel in time, you must abandon someone you love? <laughs> like this, I'm sorry. I'm I'm time traveling myself right now. <laughs> Meet. 15-year-old Annie Lockwood, a romantic living in the wrong century, when she travels back a hundred years and lands in 1895, a time when privileged young ladies were magnificent grounds and attended elegant parties and are courted by handsome young gentlemen. Annie at last finds romance, but she's a trespasser in time. Will she choose to stay in the past? Will she be allowed? (laughs) I think you explained these to me at one point in time because I'm vaguely remembering them. I know I haven't read them. (laughs) (laughs) That does bring up a question I have for both of you. Mm -hmm. Do you both read YA anymore? Sometimes. Not anymore. I can't do it. Not often, but every now and then one catches my eye that I'm like, Maybe. Because, I mean, like, technically, like, the Hunger Games, the Divergent series and stuff, those are all technically YA. So, I mean, every now and then if I find one that's, like, on that kind of journey situation, then yes. But, like, YA romance? No. I can't do it. Like, anytime I read a book, and it doesn't even need to be YA. It can be just a book where the main character is under 20 i'm just like yeah i I don't care the closest i've gotten is there's a book series called or or there's a book that i just recently finished called for the wolf which was fun it was fun to read the main character is 20 or 21 i can't remember but she specifically like the premise is that in this kingdom the eldest daughter is um, meant to rule the kingdom the second daughter is for the wolf that's like the whole premise right mm-hmm. and so that i think is the closest i've gotten to reading ya in the last i don't know five years yeah in general and especially when it like a big premise of the book is like romance i can't do ya anymore i'm like ugh, gross like i also can't do coming of age stories like that trope Mm -hmm. i'm just like i can't do it like and i think probably just because i've read so many of them and i'm like ugh, i'm done moving on i guess that's not true uh uh, i have two exceptions to what i just said um in the last five years i have read two exceptions simply because i think that they were high quality i read the uh the hate you give and i read the book thief i did read those two books which were YA, but they have to be exceptional for me to make an exception. Same. Um, there's a couple that are, I think, are technically considered YA. Um, I think 13 Reasons Why is considered YA. It is, although I, I personally, after reading that book, was like, this should not be yeah, same. something but that I, teenagers should get access to. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. It's it's a fantastic book, but I don't really think it should be considered YA, but I think it technically is. I have a lot of opinions about that book. Uh, I've never read it. I don't even know what it's about. And honestly, that's fine. I don't care. Cool. I'm glad you guys are on the same page as me. I wasn't sure if I was the only person that as soon as something is like, YA, I'm like, no. Yeah, I'm no. Not I'm, doing it. I don't go to that section no. in Barnes & Noble. Like that is, I am not YA anymore. My big thing, especially when it comes down to, like, romance, like, I don't want to read A about 
um a, a young romance at all like it's yeah, not teenage romance it sort gross. of feels gross but also like the type of romance that you're interested in as a teenager is not the same inter- like romance you're interested in as an adult yeah. like it's the things that seem dreamy and desirable when you're a teenage girl are very much not as an adult like no. Correct. Uh, just... um, but anyway, I'm cutting us off and we're moving on. Okay. It's the end of it. Good luck. Okay, so we're going to move on to the book. <laughs> we're going to move on to the book. But one thing. You can't stop me. <laughs> if anybody is listening out there, you must understand my pain. Um, <laughs> she could physically like stop me, but Wiggles is not in the same state. Regulating my own cats is easier. <laughs> uh depends which cat chow to the Chow's back in. of the boat oh my god oh my god i'm going to reach through this computer <laughs> <laughs> all right folks so we are moving on at least i am if they're not fucking leave them behind so first things first the, the, one of the things we didn't do at the beginning is just a general like uh, a warning content warning whatever um we swear you probably figured that out by now and uh we really don't kind of filter ourselves or mince words or anything so there you have it do with that what you you've will. been warned so let's go ahead and move on to the summary of this book the time I got drunk and saved a demon. I know normally we do kind of like the author rundown before this. But the thing is, is the more and more we start reading books by newer authors or by indie authors, there's not as much information out there about it. So I'm on the author's website. The about section doesn't have anything. I've been to her Facebook and her Instagram. And I'm sure if I spent hours digging through it, I could find some little jewels or gems. But I haven't. I will say, though, if you want... Um, you can go to her website, I believe, which will lead you to her Patreon. And I think she does commission uh, artwork, uh, spicy artwork for her books Ooh. that if, if you wanted to pay, you could see. Um, I haven't paid, so I don't know what you'd actually be getting. And once again, her name is? Kimberly Lemming. Okay, so this book, That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon, is book one in the Mead Mishaps uh series uh there is a book too and then there's a couple like novellas and stuff so i'm just gonna read you the back of the book and we're gonna dive in from there we've got all i wanted to do was live my life in peace maybe get a cat expand my spice farm really anything that doesn't involve going on a quest where an orc might rip my face off but they say the goddess has favorites if so i'm clearly not one of them after saving saving the demon fallon in a wine drunk stupor all he wanted to do was kill an evil witch enslaving his people I mean, I get it. Don't get me wrong. But he's dragging me along for the ride, and I'm kind of peeved about it. On the bright side, he keeps burning off his shirt. Wink. There's not a wink, um, but I believe it's there. In my mind. I mean, in my mind, it was there. It's it's there in spirit. (laughs) She does have a little bit of, like, a content warning. Um, It just says, please be aware, this book contains light BDSM, dubcon. Your girl doesn't know what that is. Violence and sexually explicit content that could trigger certain audiences. Dubious consent. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. There you go. Thank you. I didn't. I got you. Really see that. We've done books that have dubious consent in them, but this didn't really seem like one. Um, when he first kisses her. Yeah. You, you remember that, that, that fun, nice little spot where he's like, I can be your villain. That's like... <sighs> He still always asks for consent, though. Yeah, like, he maybe starts without it, but it, she very clearly says, and he stops waiting and waiting for my, like, consent or, like, my approval to move forward. Yeah. So. that's what, But that's what dubious it means. Oh. Dubious means it's like, eh. um, he also does, like, just straight up, well, we'll talk about it some more. But there's, like, the, I would say the part where there's maybe the least amount of consent, like, thinking back to this, is the part where he just straight up, like, lifts her out of her seat and puts her in his yeah, lap. Yeah, that and first like, kiss. We're yeah. making out yeah. now. Well, and you could almost say the part before that where he takes a bath with her or, like, helps her bathe. Because, like, at first it's cool because he's just taking care of her and then it, like, slowly creeps into, like, maybe not that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
anyway. Let's talk about the beginning of the book or the end of the book or the middle of the book. I don't care. Pick a part of the book. What part of the book you want to about? Well, let's start at the very beginning. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start at the very beginning. I knew that would a very good place to start. We're theater nerds. What oh. can I say? Um... <laughs> So the beginning of the book, right, it it jumps right into main character, Cinnamon. Um, What did you guys think of her naming? Like, I thought it was cute. um, And I kind of just like was like, this is funny. But I'm also a little bit done with it pretty quickly. I I reminds me of how I named my Sims. (laughs) Like, it didn't bother me. I think it would have bothered me more if like those like her name was used a lot more. Mm hmm. And like they usually called her like Sin. Yeah. And her brothers like were only there for the beginning and then like moved on. So Yeah. Her brothers' names are Cumin and and Chili. And Chili. And her sister's name is Cherry. Which isn't it's not a spice. spice. It's not I know, I kept thinking of the whole time. I was like, that's not a spice. There are other sea coriander. That's another sea spice. But anyway, so she Cayenne? (laughs) Yes. Oh cayenne would have been funny. Mm -hmm. Um So basically her family owns a spice farm and since now her and her brothers are all adults, they have all portioned off parts of the Mm -hmm. spice farm and have houses on each of them. Yes. And at the start, there is a festival because the goddess has chosen her champions and they've left. So everybody in the town is fucking drunk as shit. Yeah. They're like, it's a, it's a send, send off. That's one of my favorite opening lines, I think, that to any of the books we've read thus far, uh, which is, I only had two things on my mind, cheese and how to get home. And I'm just like, relatable <laughs> Yeah. Like, any, <laughs> like, girl, yeah. Her cheese obsession is the most relatable, not the most relatable thing. She also obsesses about wine, and, I, and I'm here for that. Um, yes. Did you guys get the vibe that this village of Boo Hale, I believe is what it's called? That's just Hobbiton, right? That's just a Shire? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's gotta be, right? <laughs> like, because all they are talking... I think it... I don't know if it's in this book, or maybe it's in the second book, because I have read the second book. They basically just talk about how they, like, throw festivals and parties for anything. Yeah. And uh, it's always... Like, everybody chips in, and everybody has to do something for it, and, and I'm just like, that's the life. I mean, it'd be fantastic. Well, and throughout the entire book, she's like, all I want to do is just, like, live in my house and drink wine with my friends and, like, that's it. And get a cat. And get a cat. And I'm like, that's, A, you're a hobbit, and B, that's what I want to. That is one of my favorite moments when she's like, she's like, all I wanted to do was get a cat. And she, at one point, just looks at him and goes, how do you feel about cats? It's like, that really bothered me. I mean, I like cats. And that's, like, the moment she's like, Maybe I do love him. He right. likes cats. Girl, I get you. <laughs> she just wants a simple life. What can I say? So the whole like book, right? The title of the book is She Got Drunk and Saved a Demon. So she's leaving this festival, drunk as a skunk, and finds this like man in the woods who's like under some rocks or under like he, he like. And there had been a big boom while she was at the festival. Mm-hmm. And basically it was like. It was almost like he fell like a I think he almost like fell out of the sky. Well, you'd have to assume because we don't know this at this point, but we do know this later in the book, is he's a dragon shifter. Yeah. So, yeah, so he like fell out of the sky. <laughs> but he also talks about how he wouldn't turn into a dragon because then, I don't know. Like I don't, it doesn't explain to you how he fell out of the sky or why he fell out of the sky. I'm assuming he had shifted um because he can shift for like a limited amount of time. Yeah. And he did escape the gate, which is why they sent the um, the champions, because the goddess supposedly holds this gate closed so that the demons can't attack her people. And every 15 years, she... Was it 15? Every 15, 15 years, yeah. she needs champions to come and basically guard the gate. And there was a very prissy girl who got sent this time. Priscilla. Yes. Yeah, so our girl Cinnamon... Uh, saves this guy because he's like in the woods injured and she's like oh man I'll help you and then he's a demon and he chases her down and then in the most like fucking anime D&D like find a weird ass solution that makes no sense but we're gonna go with it way she hits him with a, a stick of cinnamon like because it's, it's a cinnamon farm so like an actual branch from a cinnamon tree 
Right, they grow on trees, bushes, yeah. vines, who the fuck knows? I think they grow on trees. Um, so I actually, um, like, was really bothered by this, and I could not continue the story until I had the solution. Um, <laughs> Does cinnamon you. grow on trees? Could not move I on. I fucking love you. Um, so, <laughs> so, so, um, when we think about cinnamon, we think about those, like, curls mm-hmm, of it mm-hmm. that, that we get. So that's the bark that they've, like peeled off and so like the what people do when they're like harvesting cinnamon is they cut chunks out of the bark oh, like a, and then they like a bark regal yeah oh oh that yeah. makes a lot so more like sense a full now. On fucking tree yeah yeah she, so she basically grabbed a stray branch and was like whack bitch yeah but she before that she basically like ran through a maze of spice fields because she was hoping to lose him and she ran to her parents house first to try to get away well like the book said whenever you're in danger you run to mom and dad i mean yeah you're not wrong and then they all thought she was fucking insane but the thing she doesn't know at this point is hitting a fallon she doesn't know his name at this point but fallon our demon hottie hottie mchatterson was cured of the curse that the goddess slash lich in this book when i read that it's not a goddess it's a lich i was like are you fucking kidding me <laughs> i knew you'd have that reaction i was so excited for it <laughs> like, um, are you shitting me right now <laughs> and she has a curse over all of the demons we find this out right the fuck away. oh yeah and uh, cinnamon uses the branch from the cinnamon tree to defend herself and in the process apparently cinnamon is the cure for the curse so when fallon gets hit with it he shakes off the uh, at least the effects of the curse i don't know if yeah it, it doesn't completely cure it but it, it's it's a temporary solution. yeah it, be- it breaks the control she had essentially how did you guys feel about that backstory because like i the only problem i had with it was the fact that everybody like cinnamon and her family got the fuck over it real goddamn quick like as soon as fallon well, shows she- up and he's like this is what it is they're like oh well, all right, this goddess has been worshipping our whole yeah, life. Yeah, he's like super com- super polite about it, and they just believe him. I'm like, I-, I know. Could have spent a little bit more time building that up, I think. I mean, he did chase her through the fields, and she just goes with him the next day. I would have been like, oh, fuck you, bud. True, but I have to say, the image in my head of um, sitting at my dinner table, and all of a sudden, this like beautiful, handsome man shows up in a window and is like, hello. A part of me goes... Hi. Hi. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a better human being, so I've probably been like, fuck you, bro. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know. It may be too early for me to, to bring up my my main gripe about this book, but this is the consistent problem I have with it, is that we jump. We just mm-hmm. consistently jump from idea to idea without without really like any cohesive threads being like holding the sweater together you know what i mean like we're just we're just we're we're knitting away but we don't have anything together and it's just a problem for me because it's like you haven't really given us a reason to see how those two things yeah are are coming together yeah i can see that and that's an, an example we are making a lot of assumptions about what we should know it's you know uh, an assumption of why this guy fell out of the sky, an assumption of why she should just accept him right away. Her family should just accept him right away. The that's just in the first like couple pages. I will say though, the first the first um, piece of her that they destroy mm-hmm. it. What he did, like take her there to prove it to her. Yeah, but like in my mind, I'm like that didn't prove shit. Like what the fuck did that? But he prove? also did just take her. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. that's the other thing. And they were just like, yeah, I guess. Yep. Sucks to be you, Cinnamon. Have oh. fun on your trip with the demon. Glad you didn't pick me. Bye, sis. Right? The one thing, though, is I th- she has threads in the book of why this makes sense. But it's just not explored enough. Yeah. Like, the mm-hmm. fact that to them, and they talk about this more when you get to the next town, the next major town when they meet probably my favorite side character, is it Usha or Asha? I don't know how to pronounce the name. And they talk about how they've always just thought of demons as these, like, roaming, powerful monsters, but they're nothing more than beasts. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden to have one show up and talk to you and, and interact with you as if it is just another person would shake your worldview. Mm-hmm. But they just it's just not explored enough. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, because in that town, too, they the mages, like, had control of all the demons in the city. Yeah. And so, like, they couldn't talk. They couldn't defend themselves in any way. They had these horrible collars mm-hmm. on. I felt really bad for them. I was like, oh, God. But right. I did love that Asha was like, wait, we've been doing what to these people? I think it's Usha or Asha. And the reason I say that is I know a gal named Asha, and it is A-S-H-A. Ah. The one thing I will say, and Wiggles, I'm so sorry. I'm talking a lot, and you keep bringing up valid points, and I'm like, cool. And now I'm just going to take that and run with it. That's okay. Um, that is the point of the podcast. But I read this book twice, and I really love it. I, I really so liked it. I... I've broken down why I like it because I fully agree with all of the points that you're bringing up. The reason I love it is because the style of action in this book reminds me a lot about a D and D campaign because everything moves quickly and we don't have time to process. It's just plot hook, plot hook, plot hook, plot hook, plot hook. And that's how D and D not for everybody because everybody's table runs differently, but that's how it often runs. Mm -hmm. The other Mm -hmm thing it reminds me of is an anime because animes also do that a lot where it's like oh you have two episodes to go over something that really should be two seasons yeah yeah no i agree i actually was gonna when we get to the what do you suggest for if you like this book i was gonna go play D D. totally because i yeah D D, the fucking lich man it, <laughs> it that that little like moment i was like are you fucking kidding me right now? Okay, I've monopolized the conversation enough. Wiggles, you have more to say. Speak more. I'll shut up. No, no, no. No, no, no. Do, first of all, like, speak. Do not <laughs> do not feel like you should not speak. What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> We're, like, doing a fucking podcast, man. <laughs> but I think the reason that I'm frustrated with it is not even about this author. It just feels like they didn't... A frustration I have right now is that... So much time and energy is seems to be going um, to authors like, say, Colleen Hoover or um, Sergey Moss. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, and I don't have anything against those authors, but it's like as soon as you get big enough, you get these, you get editors, you get publicity, et cetera, et cetera, and you get all the support that you need to really build a really good book. And this book, to me, feels like if it had the support system that it needed, it would have been an amazing book. That, and yeah. it didn't get it. Like, it, it feels very much like a single, single person producing it on their own, and nobody was going to just help them by editing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And give them the feedback that they needed to be like, hey, this, this feels like you made a weird jump that that the audience is not going to get yeah there was a lot of times i even have it in my notes where i felt like whiplash in the book Mm -hmm. where i would like read something and i was like shit did my kindle because sometimes kindle does right sometimes it just like skips Mm -hmm. the pages randomly and you're like shit did i fucking and i go back and i'd be like okay this is what i read next page and it would be like did it do it again god damn it and it's like no that's that's actually just how it's written yeah no because i think you have yeah i definitely think you have the vibe of it that it feels like somebody wrote like wrote the book on the first pass and mm-hmm. like didn't put all the flesh to it because they're like i'm just trying to get the main pieces mm-hmm. out and then they never went back and flushed it out yeah mm-hmm. yeah no I, I i get what you mean there i mean don't get and me wrong i, I, just, I like the book i, I do really love well, the and book. that's the thing there's a lot of things that i really like here and that's i think to the thing about it that really frustrates me is that i feel like if this person would had access to a good editor like i said amazing book and right mm-hmm. now it's a it's an okay, pretty good book. You know what I mean? I think what frustrates me is that so many of these publishers won't even touch a romance novelist unless they've already made a name for themselves. Yeah. And they won't give them the support that they need to become that person. And it's just frustrating to me because you can see raw talent here. Oh, yeah. You can absolutely, oh, yeah. like, the characters are interesting. All of the mm-hmm. characters, like, and she gave us side characters. We've been complaining for how yes. long? No side characters. Gave us good side, side characters. characters. She gave us comedy. She gave us romance. She gave us surprise scenes. She gave us action. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. Like, this is raw talent. Well, and background, too, with, like, her sister dying background. and everything. 
Yes, and and background that mattered. Mm-hmm. It, right? it came like it wasn't up again. just thrown in there for nothing. Yes. It came up multiple times. Like it actually was like yes. it wasn't just oh her sister died. It was like her sister died. There's an entire scene about her almost getting sucked into the same like swamp that her sister died in. And then it came up again repeatedly where she's like I don't want to go on adventures anymore because my sister died the last time we did that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like there's a reason she decided she was a home buddy right. and she didn't want to do this anymore. Yes. And why someone like him would not be appealing for that reason. Yeah. Right. Yes. Like, it, it all, all the elements are there for this to be so good. It just needed a little bit more time. I think the other thing I loved about this, and I don't know how much y'all caught on to it, but there are so many references to pop culture, but not, like, in mm-hmm. the way of, like, mm-hmm. here's a pop culture thing, but, like, there's lines from Hamilton in it. Yes, I saw that instantly. <laughs> I think there's lines from, oh god, I can't remember, there's something else that was in it. There's scenes in it that to me feel like, so the scene where she gets pulled into the swamp really reminds me of a scene in Inuyasha where his mom comes back as this clay figure yes. yeah, and almost pulls him into the water. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many, and but it's not done in a way where I'm like, oh my god, you're just like ripping off something else it's done in a way where i'm like i know where you got this and it's cool like i feel like i found a little easter egg yep mm-hmm. it's a nice nod to them yeah the the hamilton one i was like ah! that one was clear as day and i loved it i also think one of the things that i really really enjoyed was that she made a character main character that was somebody that you simultaneously wanted to root for, but wasn't somebody that had a hero complex. Yeah, she didn't want to do this. Um, she had to. That was really mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. Well, not even... She didn't have to. No. She didn't have to. She was she was sort of, like, strong-armed into it, but she didn't have to. Right. She could have very well been like, well, we got rid of that first one. Good luck on the others. <laughs> Bye. Bye bye. And she kind of does at first. Yeah. I, th- I mean, I think she pretty much says something like yeah. that, like, have fun getting rid of the rest of those phylacteries. <laughs> well, and that's how he realized that there were other ones. He didn't. Yeah. He thought it was just the one. My favorite, though, for her at that moment was she realizes what's going on um, mm-hmm. in the bigger town. Like, she talks him into, like, they have a plan, they're going here. And one of the biggest parts of that was to um, buy a identical, like, chalice right. to to the phylactery that was in the, the thing so that they she could trick them into getting it out of there so she could destroy it. Yeah, pulling Indiana Jones. Yes. But in the process... <laughs> Another purpose. Yes. But in the process of doing that, she ran into a werewolf that was literally, like, they were trying to get him to change so that they could skin him. Yeah, that was gross. Yeah, there's actually like... a lot of really dark themes in this as well. If you just, like, take a beat and you're like, wait a minute, how are they going to skin him? If he turns, do they skin him alive or do they murder him and then skin him? I'm Either sure way, it's all bad. they skin him alive so that he heals and then they can do it again. Mm, That's how I read don't it. Don't like. Yeah. Do not like. Yeah, hate. Hate. But yep. in that moment, she could have been the asshole that did nothing and been like, mm-hmm. well, things are going to get taken care of when, you know, because when they got rid of that, the whole town basically lost control of these demons. But she didn't. She bought him and felt horrible about it. Also, one of my favorite side characters is Felix. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he comes out of nowhere all the time just doing weird fucking shit. And I'm like, I fucking love you, Felix. Also, he's the werewolf that gets a love bonus you needed at him in the second book. Oh, it's not, not as much. Hmm. I love that he has the vibe of, like, you showed me human kindness and now I'm your problem. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he's got that puppy dog like <laughs> vibe of, like, you saved me. Okay, I'm gonna follow you everywhere now. And same with yep. the snake. Yeah. She Ambrose. buys, yep. Yes. She buys Ambrose as well in that moment, mm-hmm. and they come with her the rest of the way because they're like, dude, I love Ambrose. Like I know he takes a backseat to like Felix and oh, but Usha, him. but he just like every time he shows up, I'm like, oh Ambrose, you big lug. <laughs> Like, he cares. Like, he, they're supposedly super vicious and, you know, and stuff. And he's just like, oh. But even the orcs, like Isaac, like, literally every character she writes, I'm just like, I want you and I want you and Dante. So here, here's something, though, that I, I do think is interesting. <laughs> I personally, for for all the characters that she wrote, I found that the love interest Fallon? to be the least interesting. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I wanted to fuck him as soon as she described him. Yes! 
Same. I mean, I, I wanted he to ha- do. He had some good moments. Don't get things twisted. He, there, he, he had some good lines. He sure did. Uh, let me be your villain tonight. I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, yes, please, sir. I was not Ooh. ready. <laughs> Like taking it yours. I literally, I uh, so once again, that was when I read uh, on my Kindle app, and uh, I'm pretty sure I, I basically my response to that was like, "Excuse the shit out of me, <laughs> <laughs> <Like>, bro. <laughs> you need to calm down." The second he like pinned her down, I was like, "Oh, oh, it's gonna be one of these." Mm-hmm. Danny happy. Oh yeah, this is. Uh, I did not expect the like decent commitment to the BDSM. It wasn't like full on, but it no, was there. No, but it was. It was. It was enough there that I was like, "Oh, hello, friends." Well, and then he he follows it up later on when he like he's like, "I'm your villain today." Remember, I don't need to be nice. I'm like, "Shut, <laughs> shut your whore mouth." Um. So there's a line. I don't want to ruin it for you, but I don't think you guys are gonna read the book. Maybe you will. Maybe you'll read. It's uh, a bump in boo hall or something. It's some novella. Uh, I read not all of it, but some of it. And there's a line he has while they're getting dirty. And he's like, I wasn't sure if I was going to buy you a bracelet or a necklace, but I couldn't imagine anything other around your neck other than my hands. And I was like, (laughs) 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 well, (laughs) oh yeah, there is a decent amount of choking in this book. Not like choking. He goes straight for it. He's like, yep, you want to be choked, don't you? And you're like, whoa, bro. Yeah, maybe you go, <laughs> you go, you want to be choked on you, and you go, whoa, bro, and I go, yes, please. Side note, not my thing, but I get why people like it. To each their own. I never thought I would like it. I just have natural problems with breathing, so anything that interferes with that, I'm like, oh, okay, fair enough. We're done. Um, what was I going to say? Oh no, it's gone. It's lost in the abyss of choke sex. <laughs> We forever need to keep the line <laughs> lost in the abyss of choke sex. A lot of things get lost there. <laughs> kind of like the island of misfit toys. <laughs> you know what? Why would you correlate those? She's not wrong, though. <laughs> it's the island of misfit orgasms. <laughs> Only they fit. They fit. <laughs> Um, so I, the, the turn I wasn't expecting to happen was the faded mate turn. And usually I'm not a big fan of that. And, oh, I love it. Well, here's the thing. It's not that I'm not a big fan of that trope. I actually love that trope. It's just, it usually goes bad. And this one didn't. And I loved it. I do like that, like, he didn't tell her. He basically, like, he knew from the minute he woke up. Um, but he let her get there. I, I also... I think that it was kind of cute that like the their bond like faded bond or whatever thing that he was just sort of like trying to fight it the entire time or whatever but he wasn't like it wasn't like the typical like moody like um he's clenching his fists the mm-hmm. whole time and like looking all angry at her and shit like I'm so sick of that I crap know. I gotta say why does he hate me because I was so in love with you and I couldn't have sex with you so I was angry and pent up and uh, like it was he was just like I I just really want to be as close to you as possible but I don't know how to do that without being a creep yeah <laughs> yeah like when they were in the swamp and he was just like scaring her the whole time so that she would be like fine i'm sleeping next to you but it's so that you get eaten first and in my head i was like you get murdered first yes, <laughs> yes. you know what david you get you murdered, get murdered first. First. <laughs> um i i had a whole like moment though in my brain of like why the faded mate thing is so popular and I think it's pretty obvious when you when you mm-hmm. actually start thinking about it as women, the idea of having to skip over all of the bullshit and yeah. all of the dating yep. Yep. and all of the yep. that sounds amazing. Yes. Oh god. And especially yes. moving to the point of like, it's not even that we're together in like an arranged relationship, arranged marriage way. Mm-hmm. It's in a like some guy showing up and like, hey, you, you're the sexiest fucking person in the world. I love everything about you. I wanna fuck you until we have no energy left to even stand go sounds amazing oh hell yeah it does 
I well, and also just like especially now, like I get how that trope has like risen and risen and risen as you have seen the the rise of the uh you know the online dating mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and that kind of shit because there is nothing that sucks the soul out of a body like online dating oh, and just yeah Ugh! I refuse. I won't do it so anymore. The, the, I can understand. The idea that someone will just like fall out of the sky and be like, hey, I love everything about you. Well, and, and you're going to love everything about me. And you, neither of us has to do fucking anything. Yeah, we're essentially perfect great. for each other. And somebody somewhere, Amazing. yeah, exactly, said, hey, you two will be happily ever after together. Go. Oh, man. That's the yeah. dream. That'd be amazing. It goes back to when we were talking about Deceived by the Gargoyles. If you could have a magical matchmaker just show up and be like, this person, do this person. Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck yes. Oh, yeah, instantly. Sign me up tomorrow. Because I gotta say, this shit is getting old I fast. Can't imagine. Yeah. And especially <sighs> if that son bitch shows up and he is like fucking tall and he's ripped and he has beautiful flowing hair and he turns into a dragon. On a different note, it took me until the second read to actually visualize the dragon correctly because it's not a european dragon like four lays wings it's a more chinese japanese dragon four legs no wings i really envisioned the uh river god dragon from spirited away but like different colors mm. i envision falcor but not a dog i think my yeah. vision's more sexy than or yeah, probably that's- but that's just it's the same type of thing i'll be honest with you my imagination was doing some fuck shit um and i was imagining trojar why that's the the least sexy dragon in existence i know (laughs) i know but that was like what my brain was doing (laughs) but uh, what i will say like i will admit that maybe my like not sexy picturing of the dragon maybe tainted my image of the, the demon uh, slightly in that i kind of thought he was sort of boring but oh, i was not boring say, not, like he kind of i don't know like he just i found him a little bit a little boring i'm sorry <laughs> that's fine it's 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 an opinion you're allowed to have an opinion although it's wrong even if it's wrong I- it's still your opinion <laughs> the, the, here's the thing he said the right things and he did some nice things, um, but like he he didn't quite like hit the right notes, if you know what I mean. Like, like I understand the words you're a... saying, but no, I don't know what <laughs> no, you mean. Not at all, because he <laughs> hit the right notes for me. <laughs> okay, so so here's a, here's an example when when they like go out into the water, right? And he's like washing their hair. They're like washing hair and whatever, and. Um, she kills the alligator and he's like, um, well, I guess I'm going to have to marry you now. And she's like, what the hell? Okay. See, I wanted to jump his bones for that. <laughs> well, and see, my reaction to that was just sort of like, that feels like a really weird time to say that. Like, I get that he, he was coming at it from the perspective of like, as a demon, yes, I would find that very attractive. But I don't think it's even just as a concept of like a demon in this book. If you look at it from like the perspective of a warrior, which he has always been, and he he mentions a couple times, again, this is something that should have been described better in the book. So we're having to like put our own thoughts and feelings and whatnot into it. But if you were to look at it from the perspective of like a Viking warrior or something, Mm -hmm. you want to, you're going to fall in love with the girl who's the baddest bitch on the block. And yep. that's kind of what he gets from her. Mm-hmm. But I think that the reason that that doesn't hit the mark for for me, and I don't think it really hit the mark for her either, is that's not really who she is. Right? Like, a warrior is not who she is. Correct. In that moment, she takes advantage of the moment because she knows that, like, somebody's got to do something because she knows what gators do. Right? Yeah. But, like... She's not a warrior, and she's not going to become one for him. Well, and that's the... And so, like... Well, but him be... Here's the thing. She kind of does. Mm. Like... She doesn't become one for him, but she no. does kind of, like... She kind of shows becomes that she, one. Yeah. she can be that. 
But I think that's the conflict, right? And she talks about it. She is like, when she finally decides to start thinking about the possibility of them being together, her whole thing is, but will he like me when this is done? Mm -hmm. Because what is happening right now is not my life. Yeah. And I think that's the conflict, right? Like he sees her, um, you know, from day 150, but what happens the days before that and what happens when, you know, all of this is done is the conflict in the question. Well, and they do Mm -hmm. talk about it because she does express that to him. Yeah. He doesn't really want to be in conflict either. This just happens to be his life at the moment too. Like, he... He well, didn't he says, choose this. He says the cutest thing when he's like, when I saw you and your family for the first time all sitting around and laughing and, and, you know, enjoying a meal together, he's like, I thought, what would that be like? Mm-hmm. And that's cute. Again, oh, this book, so much raw talent, so many things that are mm-hmm. there that if they just like spent a little bit more time on, mm-hmm. could have been a fucking five star beautiful book. Yes. Wiggles, why'd you have to oh. put it in my head? I was sitting pretty over here in four I'm star sorry. land. Four star I'm land was sorry. great. I mean, I'm ah. still kind of in four star still, land. Yeah, there's I, a I'm lot of change there's a lot of of happiness involved Absolutely. in this book for me. Um, can we talk about the fact that after they do defeat her and everything, he tries to hoard her? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and he tries I to hoard loved her on it. the island. Um, I can't remember because I when I through my second read, I only got like. Uh, up to Dante mm-hmm. um, does they actually say that do they actually be like to cinnamon go are you hoarding me because I feel like that would be something she would say I she didn't um, she said she basically says that she won't be held in a pretty cage yes mm-hmm. and they're talking about like all these new powers that he has now that he defeated the lich or whatever and that she also has because she's made it to him now yeah mm-hmm. And she's like, so you made this entire island, like, suitable and blah, 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 blah. But could you not just, like, put, like, a protective spell on me or something so we could go see my family? And he's like, oh. Yeah. 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 Uh Because his main concern wasn't, wasn't that anyone was going to hurt her. It was that she wasn't going to be able to control things herself. Which is fair. My One of my favorite moments in the book, again, of the 20 that I could list right now, was the moment when she was like, wait a minute, am I going to get powers from this? And he's like, yeah, probably in a few years you might be able to. And the way it's described in the book is she lifts her hand out, tries to like, you know, cast fire. Doesn't happen. And the, literally the way it's described is so she puts her wrists together and tries to cast fire. And I'm like, bitch, are you kamehameha right now? <laughs> <laughs> I also love that he's like, yeah, in like a couple of years, c- cool your shit. Yeah. And she's like, no, no, yeah. today. That would be me. I'd be <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I'm not going to Today gonna I will wait. be casting fire. I'm not going to wait. I'm literally like every single day be like, fire. Fire. Just make the candle grow a little bit. Fire. Do you, do you remember every that movie day. from way back when, um accepted the movie about like where they create a f- fake college Mm-mm. um i know what you're talking uh, yep, about yep. no no no. i know what you're talking about but i haven't seen it in so long i remember zero of it it's like well anyway it's 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 a good hoot and a half for, of fun it so is you should probably go back and watch no, it I've seen um but uh all i keep thinking about is like and picturing her doing is that there's that kid who's like i want to learn how to move shit with my mind <laughs> <laughs> and then like at the very end of the movie he's like in the like end credits he like blows up this guy's car <laughs> and like that's all i keep picturing her doing is like one day just being like and like oh no so i got it to work <laughs> oh. i do love that when they had been originally on the island they got interrupted because she was about mm-hmm. to give him a little blowy blowy. And she was like, when all this is over, <laughs> she was like, when all this is over, we need to return back to this island for yes. a month. And they, uh, like, the, her compatriots, the pirates now, mm-hmm. are like, yeah, 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 let's come back here. And he gets all grumpy about it. And she goes, they can have half the island. And then yes. when he tries to hoard her on the island, he literally set it up so that nobody could come onto their half of the island. He put up signs. Yep, he put up signs 
stating that they would burn if they came to their half of the island. Uh, the exact phrase is something, something, catch these flames. And I was like, you mean catch, it's catch these hands, but catch these flames. And I'm like, again, with the references. Right. I love them. The thing is, is I've read so many other books that use references like that. And every time they're clunky or awkward. But for some reason, the way it's done in this book, I'm just like, <laughs> I find it I so fucking it. charming. I do too. <laughs> um, so quick question, unless y'all had uh, something to go off of, because I need to know who your favorite side character is. You've heard mine and I need you to pick one. Asha. Mm-hmm. I love her. She cracks me yeah. up. She yes. She is the girlfriend that all of us need. Absolutely. Because she very much in moments is, is like, is that really what you think? Is yeah. that really how you're feeling? I also love Holly, the centaur who just shows up and is like, but why don't you mate him? He's strong. Just do it. What are you doing? Yeah, she basically does the, but why though? But why though? I also love that Holly's just like, I really came here to kick ass and chew bubblegum. But I will also give you romantic advice yes. yeah. when I have free time. But I'm really just here to kick ass. <laughs> yep. Also, her mother, I can't remember her mother's name, but her mom, like, as soon as Fallon shows up at the house and, and like, they get through the initial, like, ah, a demon. Um, and he's like, can I sit down? And she's like, oh, a guest in my home. I must host. <laughs> and in my head, I'm just like, I have no grandmothers like this. Well, and she's a bard. Yes. Yeah. She's Again, so board. much fucking backstory exists. No. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my god. The second he was like, oh, you're bard. And I'm like, her mom's a bard? Her mom's a bard. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> not little... necessarily in the like D&D magic way, but like enough of one. Okay, okay, okay. So I want to go back to this whole like the way demons mate thing. Because I'm, I've got... That's that's one of those things where like the inconsistency Do you mean like the confusing... faded mate part or the sexy mate part? The, like, faded mates gotcha. for particular demon species gotcha. thing. Because, like, apparently, if you're a dragon, you can mate with any species, but, like, it's faded and you don't get a chance to figure it out. You just smell somebody and you're like, woohoo! I want a piece of that ass. But, like, if you're a werewolf, like, that's got a whole different set of rules. Like, you bond via imprint and won't have the desire to chase after any woman until her scent calls to me and tells me she's mine. Which, okay, but why? And then, like, later on it says, like, so uh, that other demons, like, I I can't remember which ones these were. Uh, I'm going to go to my note just to make sure. Uh, The centaurs? Holly. Yeah, the centaurs. Centaurs, yeah. Um, They can only mate, like... Within their own specific species. Um, I will clarify a few things uh, because I've read the second book. Okay. The one I can't really clarify is is dragons. They are fated mates, but I don't think it's as strong as werewolf. The way they've described it, it seems more like they they do recognize their fated mate, but it's not as consuming is the way werewolves do it. Werewolves is like, I see you across the room. That's it. It's not that they don't have any sort of like sexual drive outside of that um, because Felix does talk about. Um, so the one thing we haven't talked about is there are not a lot of female demons. That is the one trope that I'm kind of like meh about, but it is fun uh, because they are more susceptible to like the effects of the curse, I guess. And so Felix does talk about the fact that he's been with like other men and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that in the second book. And then centaurs choose to mate with the strongest that's kind of the vibe i'm getting is more like a cultural thing like you pick the strongest that you can Yeah, it's not necessarily like a faded thing it's more just like survival of the fittest yeah because holly actually does end up i don't know if they end up long term but in the second book she is with a human i don't know if it's just for funsies yeah i don't know like a human girl like a woman because she talks about being into women mm -hmm. and so i'm just like in my brain, I'm like, okay, so where is the vagina on a centaur? I mean, if it's like a horse, I, I, I know I, exactly where, but still. Right. On a centaur, do you have the horse lady bits or the human lady bits? And as far as I understand, it would be the horse lady bits because mm-hmm. ways down, you're a horse. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you're eating out a centaur. You're eating out like you're eating, you're eating out, yeah. But also it's like a horse and like that's weird to me. Yeah. A little bit. 
Yeah. I mean, it's definitely got bestiality vibes going yeah, on. Yeah, I was sure. trying not to say it, but mm-hmm. yep. God, I loved, I gotta say though, I loved the orcs. Like, there's a rank of guys I would fuck in this book. This isn't one of those books where it's like, who would I fuck? Oh, that guy. It's mm-hmm. like, all right, let me talk to you about who I'd fuck. Fallon, obviously. <laughs> yes, yeah. Obviously. Dante, Hondo P. Like, he's my guy. Like, if I was going to live in this world, I'd be like, that's my guy. Mm-hmm. Old cranky ass dragon, it's my type. Um, <laughs> yeah. Third, it wouldn't be Felix. Felix, my best friend. Third could be one of the orcs. Because, like, just... Ambrose. But, like, again, where's the penis on half man, half snake? Well, okay. <laughs> and so, do you need I... one, or do you just go in snake tail? Well, here's the thing. I, I know a little uh... bit about snake anatomy. No, I know where this penis is on an actual snake. I know that. I would assume it's the same. Or, okay, here's here's the thing. Where does the snake part of his, like, bottom half start? Like, is it start at waist? I think the way she described it was waist. Or does it start at, like, where yeah. your knee, like, your legs would separate? Or, like, like in a mermaid sense? Yeah. Or, like, is it, like, y- you got, like... You got a dick, and, and like shortly after that, then that's I I that's where waste. it starts to become I a snake. Like I'm just saying, yeah. what are we working with here? Because like I don't understand. Well, because my, my other once again, I'm picturing shit that doesn't make sense. Like I'm picturing these like weird snake people. You know, the, you know the creepy snake people at, in the third Hunger Games book that like kill Finnick? That's what I'm picturing. Well, it, so here's the other thing, though. It, this could be just for dragons, but not necessarily. They're all demons. Correct. Fallon can make a human form. Yeah, but like Ambrose isn't. He's like centaur, like he's half a man, half snake. And yeah. there is a, in another book, there's a spider guy and that's weird. There's no sex with it. I'm just saying, like, visually yeah. weird. But I'm just saying, who's to say that they couldn't? Magic's weird, man. Magic is weird. Because I did re- definitely read a, a, a mermaid book, merman mm-hmm. book, and they went into human form to get down to the fucking. I mean, isn't that the story of Splash with Daryl Hannah? I mean, yes. I mean, yeah, I'd fuck him too. Miracles happen once in a while. I think I'd if fuck you everybody believe. in this book. Like, I'd fuck Holly. Yeah. Even though I'm, you know, bestiality, be like, Ugh. but at the same time, I'd be like, well, but you're not a beast. You're a fully function sanctioned person. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what I've always wondered? Hmm. If you were to ride it on the back of a centaur, would that be, like, offensive to the centaur? Um, according to the Percy Jackson series, yes. But I will say, okay. according to the second book in this series, no. Confusing. Yeah. I think it just depends on the book. I think it's a matter of consent, really. Probably. Yeah. I mean, like, that makes sense. Cause, like, if someone climbed on my back, that would be weird. Because, like, also in the Harry Potter series, yes, it's considered offensive, but Ferenzi still does it. Yeah, that's true. Um, again, he, because he wants to get Harry out yeah. of the forest as quickly as possible. So, I mean, I, if anything, I think in any book, it's really a matter of consent. It'd be weird to sit on anybody's back, really. Right. So why would you think it's appropriate to do it to a censor? So, one thing I did really, really, really like... Except, once again, I got only a taste of it instead of the entire meal. Was this whole, like, point system. Like, she has to earn, or yes. he has to earn, like, a oh, thousand yes. points, right? Yes, yes, Loved the point right? system. I loved it. I loved it. And I loved, like, after the kit, like, for the first kiss. And it's like, whoa, mm-hmm. this is going great. Um, and then, like, and then she, like, has to go cool herself off quite literally. Oh, um and, he, and he's like, um, excuse me, ma'am, I am not finished. <laughs> um, and, and she's just like, no, no, back off. And the way that she gets him to back off is like 100 points. 100 points to Gryffindor. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, and I loved that. And so I was so disappointed that we got one instance of that. And then it instantly was 900 more points. And I was just like, <sighs> again, you're right. Like there, there should have been more. Like, yes, yeah, I would have liked if it toyed along just a little. I mean, I liked the like give in moment, but I wish she had gave in at like 500 points, not. Or if it was one of those things where it was like there were so many like almost given moments Mm -hmm. and then it finally did. Yeah. 
Yes. Like, okay. Um, imagine this, if you will. Imagine this. Imagine. Like, instead of just immediately 9,000 points, you, you have a couple of moments where she gives him, le- like, he he does something nice for her, like, gives her some cheese, right? And she's like, five points, right? Or, um, and then, like, sh- he, he, like, cures her hangover, right? And she actually is like, fine, 50 points, right? Whatever. Fine. And then, like, when it finally does come down to, like, she's going to give in, um, she doesn't just give in. She's, like, as as he's, like, slowly stripping her and takes, like, one item of clothing off, that's 100 points. That's 100 points. That's... That, oh. What? Oh, oh, that's oh, so, so sexy. Oh, my oh. God, that's sexy. Wiggles. Yes. Wiggles, I write this story. I would love that. <laughs> write me this scene. <laughs> Oh, right like yes. that is and that's sexy what I, as fuck yes and that's what I, I don't know that's what i like had pictured in my head that we were gonna build up to this is why i have to be honest with those i think you would be the best sorry tantatin again we'll come back you would be the <laughs> best fucking editor because you would be the best at being like here's the thing love this thing love this moment what if you did like which i know is more than an editor but like you would be like the best person to be like alpha read or like whatever something because it would just be like love this love this do also this though but what about <laughs> this because that is right like that perfect. just would have been so hot <laughs> that is perfect and there are so many moments even if she didn't change the book to just add lines of like okay you destroyed i don't know you saved these demons who were trapped in the Colosseum. Hundred points, you know, just like little shit like that yeah. that you could yeah. like tweak the, the the current story. But the sex mm-hmm. scene of like, take off your pants will give you fifty points. Yeah, mm-hmm. love it, Briar. Love yes. that. And I was so so like when it was just like lump sum nine thousand points, I was just sort of like, oh, but why don't? Okay, but why? <laughs> Then why do the points at all? And know? I mean, I get that she was giving in to like. Oh, like, I love the Holly game. had 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 even said, but why though? But why though? <laughs> but but why? <laughs> just do it, man. <laughs> just, just go for it. But oh god. Yes. God but, damn yeah. it, Wigs. Now I have. I'm sorry. Go to bed tonight <laughs> with that scene in my brain. That's a great way to go to bed, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I I also like I have to say I that in that same chapter one of my favorite things is that she became the cheese queen and I was like that's For my real? dream oh my god okay that was one of the most relatable parts of this entire oh my god. book is she gets Make drunk the goddamn cheese, and then, qu- cheese queen like she gets drunk and she yells at everybody I'm the cheese queen bring me cheese and everybody brings her cheese bring me the cheese and she's like sits in the captain's chair and is just like I'm the cheese queen surrounded by cheese and then she falls asleep in a bed of cheese. I'm like, yeah. I Does that feel that. Sound like, that I, sounds, that sounds like something exactly we would do. exactly like the type of shit that we would do oh, 100%. With, oh, yeah. with the right 100%. amount of alcohol. I have, to, I have to address this. I have to address this because I'm, I'm unwell. And this is, this is once again where a good editor would tell you, no ma'am, Pam. Uh-uh. <laughs> we're not doing this. This quote took me out for so long that I threw my phone on my bed and I walked out the room. I said, no, ma'am. No, ma'am, Pam. We're not doing this. What the fuck? It says, my nipples scraped. 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 My nipples scraped against his bare chest and my tits burst out to greet the day. No. You just don't like the word scraped. Like if she literally would have said any other word. Scraped. Scraped scraped excuse me caressed Ugh. maybe anything but scraped when have you ever wanted your nipples to scrape anything they're they're not spatulas what the fuck they're not scrubbies to clean your dishes with <laughs> scrape no no <laughs> okay fine so uh, uh nipple scraping ness aside what would you rate it's a problem i I understand (laughs) i understand what would you rate the spiciness of this book uh three ish Uh, yeah i'm feeling a solid three i'd agree with three but it's like it's like a high three to me it's not a four 
it has some like BDSM elements in it, not a lot, and not mm-hmm. like super spicy, but it, I mean, it's got some good solid yeah, yeah. moments. Your villain. Oh. <sighs> mm. Dear God, I, he stole I my heart a little bit on that, that one. Like, the dirty talk in this was oh. far less gross than it normally is. True. So here's the thing. I, it's the weirdest thing. I love me some dirty talk if it's done correctly. And oh, this yeah. was done correctly. Yes, yes, I would agree. Yeah. My heart melted yeah. for this man because of his dirty talk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, you're not wrong, Danny. Like, there's so many times I read dirty talk and I'm just like, ugh. Would you yes. ever actually say that out loud? And, I'm and like, if someone did, you'd be like, hmm. Well, yeah. thanks for killing the mood. But Goodbye. literally everything Fallon says during sex, I'm like, can you say that to me? Say it again. Say, more. say it again. Say more. All the way. Keep talking. More. Yeah, I, I love some dirty talk as long as it's done correctly. I do. I also love the line when she wakes up as he's carrying her like away from Dante after the crash on the beach. And she's like, where are we going? And he's like, we're going to a place where the... the I can't remember what he exactly says, but it's like... Or our friend there won't hear your screams. Yes. And I'm just like, ha! 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 You pulled a Tina Belcher. Ha! 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 Maybe 3.5? Maybe 3.5? Yeah. Yeah. Purely I don't know. I feel like we're struggling on this one on, like, figuring out where to place that. And, like... I just don't think it's quite to the we'll level of a day. four, but it's no. definitely we well done. And yeah. I don't think this is the same level as Gargoyles. No. 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 Gargoyles. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We learned some Yo. things about Danny that day. My- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Dad damn it. Anyway. You don't get to right. fantasize Ooh. while I'm right here. Girl, it's not the only time and it won't be the last. Y'all. We just we just gotta get through five more minutes. And then you can go do whatever your dark little hearts desire, okay? Five okay, minutes. Okay, the romance, 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 romance. Right. Um I liked the romance. Uh, I'd say I'm also a three. A three. I'm also There's, a three, yeah. Yeah. There are some things that I, yeah. I wished for that did just, not come to fruition. Just more meat. Yes. Yes. More flesh like in the said, bones. Also there, like if you expand it, better. Yes. Yeah. It just needed more expansion. Like, I just needed, I needed it to have less of this, like, whirlwind Romeo and Juliet, like, timeline and more yeah. of a realistic timeline. Yeah. And I think it would have been great. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So with that in mind, final rating. Honestly, a four. I like this book a lot. I'm at a four. I honestly, the first time I read it was actually, like, teetering on a five. I know that sounds crazy, but the fact that it was so fast so short and i needed more was the thing that pulled me back yeah i know that i am in the minority here um i i gave it a three and i stand by it like not because i didn't enjoy it i just would have enjoyed it more if it had the structure that it needed behind it and it it was just it didn't have the the support structure that it needed to be fully fleshed out and to me that was what it yeah, and Wiggles, that doesn't surprise – well, it surprised yeah. me at first, but, like, thinking about it, it doesn't surprise me because, like, that is more who you are. Correct. Like, you really like those things, and I'm saying – and I'm not saying, like, Danny and I don't. It's just, you know, for you, it would be more, I think, of a of a negative to not have the, like, fully fleshed out, like, story beats – Mm-hmm. It's not even that the plot wasn't fleshed out. I feel like the plot was there. Yeah. It's just like the story beats and the story moments weren't. Yeah. They just needed a little more in between yeah. the like major plot points, I feel like, to really flesh out the story. Right. But as far as like the whole concept of the story, the plot and everything, I liked it a lot. Right. How many fucking romance novels do we read that don't have a plot and this had like, this had a plot and a half? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think... Uh, like uh, the way the best way to for me to like summarize how i felt about it is there's there's like a phrase in in literature in general that just like it eats at me when i i see it and i saw it in this book um and as soon as i see it i'm like no mm-mm. and it's this do you really not know no your 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 character doesn't know and your reader doesn't know and you, it's your job as the author to tell us so that's that's one of those things that just like it eats at me like you're i need you to tell me your story and not just assume 
that we can catch up through context clues um, right. with what you're saying. Fair tell, enough. Tell us your story. That's your, that's the point of your book. Tell us your story. So, yeah, it does make a difference to me. With that in mind, I do have to ask for your recommendations. Who would like to go first? I will. Play D&D. Danny, <laughs> but you are spot fucking on. This book, like I said, sorry, I'm taking over other people's things again. Anyway, like I said, was a D&D book. His D&D book. It, it, yeah, I mean, we play D&D every week. Wiggles doesn't, but Liz and I do in the same campaign. Two campaigns, actually. Ooh, soon three. <gasps> Little Miss DM. And aside from the romance, because we don't really do romance in our campaigns. I except fucked for wrong the-, the last time we played. Uh, you did indeed. Also, Pappy's character fucked um, Maggie. Maggie. In oh, that another was actually campaign. cool, man. Last, that lasted over several sessions. Yes. Anyway. But it, it, it very much felt like a choose your own adventure book and in a D&D, D&D way. And I very much love it for that reason. Because Do you have a, part, part. a uh, live play that you like to watch that you like to suggest? Um. I mean, I always suggest Critical Role. I love Critical Role so much. I haven't really watched any others. No, that, that's fair. There's a lot out there. Yeah. Wigs, what you got for me? I don't have a lot of, like, great suggestions. Um, but I guess if you want the, like, non-relaxing version of this book and the stressful and anxiety-inducing and um, cranky version of this book... Uh, you could always check out A Court of Blah and Blah that is uh, the Sarah J. Moss series. Um, I, I say that I say that like I hate those books. I don't hate those books. I'm, I'm actively reading them right now. It's just like that's the entire series is A Court of Insert Word and Blank Insert Word. Um, and so I just like refer to them that way. <laughs> <laughs> A Court of Thing and Thing. Maybe that's better. Because that's pretty much what it is. Uh, like it's, I mean, it's not exactly, but it's damn near close enough. Um, and it's, it, so it's, it's high, it's got this fantasy element and it's definitely got this like person who's like drawn into an adventure that wasn't really intending to be a part of an adventure kind of thing. And I, they're very popular right now for a lot of reasons. And so like, you know, you can check it out if you want to. Um, I will say, um, I am struggling right now to get through the second book. Not because it's not readable, but it I, it isn't holding my interest. Mm. So um, that's not necessarily a, a critique on the book itself. Um, that j- might just be where my brain is at right now. Like I said, I read about. I'm currently reading nine different books, so that's Insane. not. I don't know how you can do that. Fair insanity. assessment of that book. I don't know. I never said I was sane <laughs> or normal. Neither did we. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm I'm a complete psychopath, and I I accept myself for all my. Flaws. I don't think illegally you are, but you know what you can you can claim to be whatever makes you feel better. Uh, <laughs> so my suggestions, I'm gonna piggyback off of Danny because as soon as she said, like when we were prepping for this, just D and D in general, my brain went to like the live plays that I love watching. I, I love Critical Role, so she she suggested. I also love Dimension Twenty. Um, and I do think they actually have two series. So in like Critical Role, they do very short series. Critical Role is like hundreds of episodes. Theirs is like uh, 12 episodes. A uh, Court of Fae and Flowers, which I've brought up in before, I think is really good for this. It's the idea of the classic fairy court um, mixed with Regency tropes and a lot of humor. It's fabulous. The other one I would watch is Escape from the Blood Keep. It is a, a really enjoyable uh, D&D series where what if we told the story of Lord of the Rings from the villain's perspective? Ooh. Um, it's hilarious and, and really well done. Uh, it's a comedy, right? So it, it's, it's funny, but it's really good. And then I would also suggest Gideon the Ninth by Tasman Murray Murray. Uh, it's not a romance, but it is a sci-fi fantasy uh, book that has a lot of kind of like humor and sarcasm in it. And that is the end of my suggestions, which I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, folks, brings us to the end of the podcast. It does indeed. 
So I want to thank you all so much for listening to us talk about a book that while we had some comments and feedback on really enjoyed and we really hope you read it we hope that you also enjoy finding new authors like we do um and new stories so if you find any new authors uh, new stories please let us know we'd love to read them uh in general though if you if you have any thoughts comments feedback let us know find us out on all the socials at wrong dust jackets or just wrong jackets depending on which social it is if you're not sure where to find us in general you can find us on wrongdustjackets.com, our website and i believe i'm gonna say good night hey y'all good night good night bye bye Thank you.